Howdy friends, it's your favorite farmer Steve with a much anticipated update on better get to know a garden. It's been a while and I, people have been taking me right and left. Where's the next video? Where's the next video? Well, I promised you this year I would only bring you prime content and I think I have some prime content. Not all of it's good news. We have some good news and we have some not so good news and we have some tragic news. Such is the life of a uh, big city farmer. Anyway, I'll take you around and I'll show you the good, bad, and the indifferent. Well, here's our best hope of Steve's Port Organic Farm surviving, and it has nothing to do with Farmer Steve. This is all Carol's handiwork. This is probably about a million dollars of Linaria or silver dollars, which are, I don't know what the silver dollar futures are on the stock exchange today, but I'm sure it's considerable. These are very fragile and very desirable. I've got a call out to Lloyd's of London to give me an insurance quote on the damage that will probably occur once uh, we try to get this out to New York in some way. But um, this is going to be uh, big for it. Alright, one of the other big events that occurs this time of year is the garlic harvest. So this is the garlic that I dug up uh, about two weeks ago. And you say, whoa, look at that, you know, look at all that garlic. Well, there's about two dozen or so pods, but they're not very big. They're certainly not very impressive. They're out here curing. They got to cure for a couple weeks. And they'll taste really good. However, uh, they're not very big. So my spiritual garden advisor and garlic expert, Brian, said maybe what you need to do is actually invest <clears throat> in some what they call seed garlic, which are very large pods, kind of pricey. And uh, bigger pods means bigger uh, yield. So I've got those ordered, you know, cha-ching, another $30. Um, I'm going to put those in in September and see if that makes a difference. Now here's my weak effort on the Linaria, the, the supplemental income that I grew, you can see it is uh, a far cry from the bu uh, bumper crop that Carol raised. Okay, this is uh, uh, the pepper location. Pepper, and this year I've got uh, Brussels sprouts going. Now, it's interesting, I'll show you a little bit uh, something here in a minute, but uh, all kinds of peppers. Now I gotta get down here and weed, don't look at the weeds. Um, three different kinds they're starting to produce. Uh, they've loved the hot weather and the hot humid weather, but I haven't, so I haven't gotten down here to weed. Um, the Brussels sprouts are doing really well. Interesting story. Um, I had one plant die, and so I planted another one, and this thing came up. I took this seed out of the same packet as all these other Brussels sprouts. This is obviously not a Brussels sprout. I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody out there does. I don't know if it might be like a wild mustard or something. I'm not sure. But uh, it is not uh, a Brussels sprout. But I'm letting it go just to see what the heck. Now here is one of our first full blown disasters. This is the asparagus patch, and it is sad. I stopped cutting asparagus about a month ago, and something's gotten in here and has started eating it. And you can see there's nothing. Now, if you'll remember in the past, <coughs> the spears would come up, like this guy right here, and they'll grow into ferns. And usually about this time of year, you got ferns like that, about this high. Well, there's very few. I'm really afraid something bad has happened. I have fertilized the heck out of it. I've watered it. I have not over-harvested it. But something is getting in here and eating it. 
And I don't know if that's the only problem, but I really think that um, there's going to be some major replanting cha-ching next year. Now, to try to figure out what is doing it, I've cha-ching bought Critter Cam. This is a trail camera that has a, uh, a heat sensor and a motion sensor and it'll take a picture and a video. It was only about 30 bucks you can see. I really went all out mountaining this. Uh, I just seeing if I could figure out what was getting in there so I could prevent it. But so far the only thing I've captured is a couple deers walking around the perimeter and nothing else. So I think something it's pretty small um, and it's eaten everything so it hasn't come back. Now there's a couple shoots that are up now so maybe it'll come back and uh, try to munch on those. So I'm going to uh, reload the camera. So right now I've got the SD card in there. Turn it on. And there, I got it right on those spears. And like I said, no luck finding out what it is. Um, but something has really, really attacked this big time. And uh, it, it's, it's really ugly looking and it's, it's, it's shameful. Okay, we're not gonna spend a lot of time over here, but uh, uh, this is uh, what, you know, what I've said called the herb garden. Not a lot of herbs in here right now. This is where the garlic came out of and where it'll go back. And I've got a few things going. Uh, a lot of weeds. i got to get out here and weed. There's just some, some dill, some summer savory, some fennel. You can see the deer footprints. They love to come through here. And uh, this is the horseradish. Now, I had visions of this year uh, digging that up and making some horseradish for everybody to get a little sample but my horseradish advisor who is uh, uh, renowned all over central Illinois for growing horseradish says no you cannot do that the first year you got to let it go and believe me if anybody knows JD knows so I will not be get harvesting any and you will not be getting any okay so in the main garden, not gonna. Yeah, this is all the usual stuff. The tomatoes are doing really well. They've actually pierced the tomato canopy, uh, which is doing everything I hoped it would do. Uh, this is the earliest that it has done that. So uh, a lot of green ones set on. Uh, they're doing pretty well. I've been spraying the heck out of these things with that carbonate to keep the uh, uh, blight down. You can see this is what it starts like right here. And if you spray it with this potassium carbonate, it, it really, really helps. Uh, and of course, every time it rains, it washes off. You have to reapply it, but it's easy to do and pretty cheap. So I found out the way it works is that it makes the leaf surface alkaline and the spores won't hatch. So that's how it works. Uh, green beans, uh, we've gotten a lot of green beans that are doing well. Now here's one of the big kind of disasters. I don't want to call it the disaster totally, but I thought, well, you know, I've got a lot of plants to start and, and rather than buy two grow lights, um, I, I tried to rotate things between all the grow lights and I said, yeah, you know, the cantaloupes and the melons, you can just direct plant those, and uh, which these are. And you say, well, geez, Steve, they look pretty healthy and, and they are. But they're also way behind uh, where they should be too because they started from seeds and not plants. So I don't know how successful these are going to be. I've got squash. Uh, this is a curry squash down here. A pumpkin. The butternuts. And the cantaloupes. Uh, I don't know whether we'll you know, get anything off of them if there's going to be enough growing time. And I replanted a few more beans in here. Now there's going to be a major presentation for the bee house. Hang on. And the cucumbers, of course, plenty of those. And a few okra plants that the in insects and the rabbits didn't get at. Um, of course, we have okra from last year still. Now the saddest thing that occurred, the complete, complete failure, and um, 
uh, Vanessa, I need you to avert your eyes and ears at this point, is this is where all the popcorn was supposed to be. And you may or may not remember that um, I put a whole bunch of gypsum in here to try to break this soil up because it's very hard and compact. And I think it did that, but guess what? The corn didn't like that at all. I got like zero germination. I replanted it. The only thing down here right now is crabgrass. And I said I'd need to do some heavy duty weeding, but uh, it's been so hot, but I can get out here now. We have exactly one corn plant, one. I am going to call her Eunice, not E-U-N-I-C-E, -E, Eunice as in U-N-I-S, as in one, one corn plant. I don't think we're going to get a lot of popcorn, do you? So Scott, this little segment is just for you. Here's uh, some of the red buckeye. Uh, well, I guess they're, they're buckeyes of some sort. Now, we don't have that many, so I'm going to have to rescue these from the uh, squirrels before too long. And the reason I think we don't have that many this year is when this thing blooms, the hummingbirds arrive. Well, they didn't arrive when this thing was blooming, or not to the extent as usual. So we don't have as many. They're the ones that really kind of do the uh, work on this thing. And just to show you that I'm not the only one that grows stuff, here's uh, Carol's summer garden out here, which is really, really pretty. Um, this, the big purple ones are summer flocks, and they're just really spectacular. Daisies, of course. And uh, you can see the butterflies just love this uh, summer flocks. They're all over it. And a few crocosmia, they're about done and uh, some sort of geranium that comes up every year, but really nice to sit down here. <clears throat> okay, well, folks have been clamoring, I mean clamoring, about where's the bees? How are the bees doing? Thought you were going to get some bees to help you pollinate and get bigger yields. Well, the bees have arrived today. So, here's the bee house that I put up hmm, a while ago in hopes of attracting some of the native wild bees. I haven't seen any. So here's a cha-ching, some bees. These are leaf cutter bees from the state of Washington. So I'm gonna release them. This will be interesting. Now, I'm not hearing any buzzing in there. Um, so I'm thinking they're all still in their cocoons, but we'll see, stay tuned. So I'm going to take, this is the squirrel and bird guard, taking that off, and then this is some like bee pheromone that's supposed to make it feel like home. Kind of spray this on. Oh boy. It smells, it smells like burnt butter, maple syrup or something. I don't know, I hope they like it. That's it. So that's all that's all it's supposed to need now. Here we go. It's supposed to release them near the bee house. I'll show you some of them. Up oh, there's one little bee that's hatched. There's a couple, there's three or four, up, oh, there they go. There was about four of them that have hatched, and almost all of them, there's like 200, uh-oh, are in their cocoons. So hopefully you can see this. They're like, they cut a leaf and then they plant an egg and they roll it up and then they put the eggs in these tubes. And when they're full, eventually they will hatch, go out, do their thing, pollinate,
procreate, come back with little bits of leaves, go in the tubes, chew them up, make more cocoons, and then allegedly you can harvest the cocoons and keep it going. I'm doubting that works. So, they're really small. They're only about this big. Oh, there he is. He's cute. So there he is. I don't know if you can see him. There's a little leaf cutter bee right there. There's one that flew out. Hopefully they like their new homes. We'll see. Now we put this back. Okay, go to it little bees. They're all hopefully going to hatch in the next day or two. Go out. I got a lot of flowering plants here. Do their things and uh, make the garden uh, bountiful. Okay, now you can get a better look here what these things are all about. So it's just, they just look like uh, little green rabbit turds and uh, the ones that have hatched have already flown away. Hopefully they'll come back to these beautifully prepared homes and uh, nesting tubes, but we'll see. <clears throat> so what have we learned here? So we have learned even though asparagus is supposed to be in there for 20 years, there's something I'm doing wrong or something that's getting in there that has really ruined this. Maybe it have to start over. Don't know. That's a bad one. Number two, don't alter your soil too much from the previous year in one shot like I did down there with the gypsum. It was successful last year. It didn't need that much, or it could have waited till after the crop was done. That would be key. Number three, things in Ohio, you need to start with a plant. Don't rely on seeds germinating and having enough growing time uh, for it to uh, come to a full harvest situation. But not all bad. We're going to get Brussels sprouts, lots of peppers, lots of tomatoes, tons of cucumbers. And uh, uh, I guess the other thing we learned is that uh, you can't harvest uh, horseradish the first year. So with that, have a wonderful July part of August. We'll be back when there's something worthwhile to say.